Hello, welcome to the Indie Ocean Video and Let's Play channel again. This time, Dead Pixels. Enjoy the 70s grainy filter type thing going on here. Dead Pixels is very referential of other zombie media, as you'll see in due course. Now, this is one of the best games on Xbox Live Indie Games. Um, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. It's popularly held to be such. Um, and I was going to do just a short This Is video in my new series, but really there's too much in Dead Pixels for that, so we're going for a proper Let's Play in several parts. So I have this nice NES style intro here. Toxic waste spill. Stuff comes over the ground. Only 5% of the population can be considered alive. The rest are zombies. 95% of the people in the world are zombies. Seems a little excessive. Although, of course, you could remark that that's true already. Ho, ho. So, basically, some people have got a helicopter and they're standing looking worried. Somehow knowing that you're heading their way. Um, and you have to find your way across the city to get to them before they leave. A city 95% full of zombies. Okay, this is the um, sort of basic campaign mode of Dead Pixels. Um, more recently, the developers introduced uh, two extra modes which we'll come to later. Now we have to pass through 10 streets here because I put it on easy. I didn't see the point in dragging it out with harder difficulty modes, plus I haven't finished normal mode yet. So we have to get through 10 streets in order to get to the helicopter. I'm using my melee attack, essentially prodding zombies in the face with my gun, um, because at this early stage in the game I find that's an effective way to gain money. In true zombie survival horror style, you need to conserve as much ammo as you can. I'm going to search this building. This is something that happens quite a lot. Many buildings can be searched, many can't. And these green arrows indicate a trader, where you can sell the stuff that you've picked up and buy more ammo and new weapons if you're so inclined. But both money and ammunition are at a premium. Um, so although you can sell off all this crap, which always feels a bit Fallout 3-like to me, um, you pick up you know, canned meat and teddy bears and things, normal everyday items that you then sell at these isolated traders who are holding out against the zombie invasion. Um, and try to decide whether you want to buy upgrades, permanent upgrades for your character or ammo. So at this point, um, right at the beginning of the game, I usually melee the enemies simply to conserve ammo because I'm not in danger of being swamped at this point. So there's a lighter, there's a new weapon. You start with a shotgun, um, again, in true zombie apocalypse fashion. Um, but there are several types of guns and various sort of power levels of those guns. I picked up, I think, a bolt-action rifle a minute ago. They can be quite good. They've got good penetration for dealing with crowds of zombies. But, yeah, bolt-action rifle. Um, but I don't know. I usually default to the shotgun anyway. Try and bunch these together to catch them with the spread of the shotgun. And you can see a lot of these buildings have already been searched. I like the way that adds to the atmosphere. Um, and then you spray across on them to indicate that you've cleared out the building after you've been in there. And here we have, you are not alone, referential, as I said. Although I can't remember what it's a reference to. So, if you can remember, leave it in the comments. And I'll feel enlightened. I'll send you a cake or something. <clears throat> so, controls in Dead Pixels are pretty unusual. Um, you move around with the left stick, as you might expect. But you shoot either left or right by pulling the left or right trigger, respectively which is an odd control scheme, but it works really well, and I didn't have any trouble getting used to it. R.I.P. Bill. Oh, that's a bit of a spoiler for 
certain people. Um, it's a Left to Dead reference. Let's just leave it there. <clears throat> so, lighter, some other crap. You also get grenades that you can throw left or right using the bumpers in a similar way to the way that you open fire. Um, and you have healing items, you know, first aid kits and that sort of thing that I think you used with X. So it's all pretty easy to handle. The control scheme is simple and uh, practical, which makes a huge difference. <clears throat> As you might imagine, this being the very first street on the easiest setting, it's not too tricky. Later on in the game, even on the easy mode, you really start getting swamped. And at the moment, I'm taking out every zombie I come across, more or less, in the interest of accumulating money so I can buy upgrades. But later on, I usually end up just running past loads of them. Okay, flog these things that need a lighter or a bottle of water. Mm. Mm. Might as well sell that. Um, it's tempting to hold on to my last bolt action rifle here because they are quite good, but I don't know. The money might be worth it. I pick up some shotgun shells because I will need them bullets for the rifle, um, because even if I get rid of this rifle, which I am tempted to do, I'll probably get another weapon at some point that uses that form of ammo. <clears throat> okay, upgrades. You can see all the upgrades cost 11.30 at this point, and I don't have enough for that. But the upgrades, unlike upgrades in some games, the upgrades in Dead Pixels, um, yeah, let's get rid of the rifle, so I can buy an upgrade. Um, the upgrades in this actually make a very, very noticeable difference. Like, if you buy a health upgrade, which is usually the first one I get, um, it, you will notice a, a huge jump in your health bar. You also have weapon skill, which lets you do more damage. Um, you know, things that will let you carry more stuff which is very important, as it is in things like Fallout 3. Because, like Fallout 3 and Oblivion, and other recent Bethesda games, um, you have an encumbrance limit. You can't just ransack all these empty buildings endlessly and pick up everything you find, because sooner or later you will hit your limit and slow to an absolute crawl. And again, at the moment, that's not too much of a problem if it happens. But later on, when the zombies are absolutely everywhere, it becomes a serious problem. Okay, we're on to the second street here. And we'll start probably seeing some new types of zombies. There are quite a few types in this. We've only seen the basic ones so far, but those guys are easy. In fact, they all appear to be the same guy. Um, clearly, 95% of the population not only became zombies, but also became Dave. Three bullets, that's always good. Um, I think bullets are weightless in this, as they are in Fallout. <clears throat> Another Dave, poke him in the face till he dies. <laughs> I'm not sure jabbing someone gently in the face would be that effective for making them explode into a puddle of gore, but it seems to work on zombies. Or Dave the zombie, anyway. Okay, round like another house. Mystery meat, always bad news. I assume that's spam. Or the kind of meat that you get in um, takeaways when it says things like meat curry and meat chow mein. I've always wondered what that meat is. Clearly, it's meat from a can of mystery meat, looted from a zombie apocalypse. It explains a lot about the quality of some of those dishes, actually. Now, one thing it's important to note about Dead Pixels, um that I'd almost forgotten to mention, is it's procedurally generated. Now, I love procedurally generated games anyway, typically. I like the fact that they're different every time you play. And in Dead Pixels, it isn't as conspicuous as in some other games, something like The Binding of Isaac, Lair of the Evildoer, something like that. 
actually has a different map layout each time you play. Now, Dead Pixels, as you've probably noticed, is simply running to the right along a straight road. So you don't have different map layouts from the procedural generation. Um, but the enemies you encounter, where they appear, which shops you can loot and which you can't, um, what's contained in these buildings, and crucially, the locations of the traders are all randomised. So you can't just... It may look like a game on an 8-bit console, but you can't take an 8-bit strategy. Um, you know, you can't just keep practising until you know exactly where every enemy is and you can just glide through the whole thing like some kind of maestro. It changes every time, so you're always forced to adjust on the fly. More mystery meat. Ugh. I'm kind of getting fed up of fighting these basic zombies at this point. They don't drop all that much money. Um, the zombies who spit green goo at you, in addition to being quite annoying thanks to the trajectory of their goo, um, drop silver coins, which as you might expect are worth a lot more than brown coins. I'm not sure what kind of metal these brown coins are made of. I'm not sure I really want to know. But there's a silver coin. Um, they're worth more money. And later on, you get some really, really seriously tough zombies. Not necessarily powerful attackers, although some are, but they tend to be fast and or extremely resilient, and they drop gold coins. Now, as I mentioned before, cuddly toy. Um, as I mentioned before, the developers of Dead Pixels have added two new modes recently, for free. I mean, this was already a good value game, with all its randomised replayability and several levels of difficulty and all that. Um, and it's quite unique. So it was already good value at 80 Microsoft points, which is next to nothing. Um, <clears throat> but they keep adding new content to the game. I mean, they added two new game modes, which basically doubled the size of the game. There's a kind of survival one in a shopping centre um, that's a bit of a uh, Nazi zombies kind of thing, for those of you who played Call of Duty World, World at War. Um, of course, it's still done in dead pixel fashion. It's not first person or anything. It, it's, it's done in the same way. Um, but you have waves of enemies, and traders only open up between waves. But again, you have to deal with upgrading your character and making sure you have enough ammo and all that sort of thing. Um, there's also another mode called uh, the Solution, I think, or something like that, um, which is basically uh, what happens after the main story here. Um, as you can see, I'm at the moment, I'll just add, I'm buying health, strength, and weapon skills. So, um, I know I already had health, didn't I? But anyway, um, I bought some strength so I can carry more stuff um, before I reach my encumbrance limit. And weapon skills so I'll do more damage. Uh, speed is also a good one to have if you're planning on dodging round crowds of zombies, but... As you might expect, you have to choose carefully. There are always trade-offs. Um, yeah, so the uh, the final mode, the solution mode, is... It follows on directly from the end of this sort of main campaign mode. And you play as one of several um, convicts. You get to choose your character in that mode, unlike in this one. And they all have their own strengths. Um, they're basically they're already upgraded, um, so they have a lot more health and do a lot more damage, and they're all upgrade, upgraded differently, so they have their own strengths and weaknesses. Um, and it means you can plough through zombies a lot more quickly than you, than you can at the start of this mode. Um, so it's much less of a survival thing. Um, there also aren't any traders, as far as I remember. So it's less about hoarding and 
trying to make a trade-off between picking stuff up and overburdening yourself and selling it. Um, it's much more of an arcadey mass of carnage. Um, look at this guy with his wire fence over the counter. Do you really think that will protect you from zombies? What's wrong with you? Anyway, uh, we'll call a halt to it here. And uh, I think that's two, maybe three streets in. So rejoin me the next time for more dead pixels as we press on into the next street of the apocalypse.